So, so Bill, I'll, I'll shift to the provider perspective here because um, classically, um, the, the, the perception has been that providers are just focused on the balance of efficacy and toxicity um, with the advent of ACOs and the OCM, the oncology care model. Uh, there, there's been this push that um, in, in more inclusive of patients' perspectives that should be patient-centric models, the notion of shared decision-making. But I've also heard a lot of pushback from providers that it's, it's, a great, it's great in concept, but the reality is health literacy in this country is quite poor. Um, considered to be only a third of the population is actually high health literate from different public health study estimates. And health literacy is not just comprehension and reading, but it's numeracy and it, it, it's also um, uh, more about understanding the data and the way the data is used. So I'm, I'm, I'm curious, as we look at that patient perspective, how do you view the incorporation of patient perspective and then the shared decision-making uh, as you approach patient care in a value-based environment? Yeah, so I think that's a critical element, obviously. And, and I suspect Joyce in many ways thinks the same. And that is that when we see any patient you know, our first thought is, and I'm referring now in the metastatic disease setting, you know, our first thought may be, what's the most effective therapy as we start making, engage in our decision making? And that alone is not what decides what we're going to recommend to the patient, but it's where we start. And then that is tempered by looking at the patient and thinking about the side effects that are associated with any uh, given choice of therapy. So the point being that in any patient, you may know what the most effective therapy is, but it may not be, and when I say effective, I'm talking about clinical efficacy endpoints. But for a given patient, you have to look at them and you have to talk to them. You have to decide what their overall medical condition is. And as was pointed out by Kelly, you know, different patients have uh, different goals uh, and what they're willing to tolerate. And I would also say all of this is colored by what you pointed out, and that is that uh, patients have different levels of understanding regarding what we mean by clinical efficacy, uh, what we mean by uh, survival or time till you need your next treatment decision. People interpret that in very different ways. So I think that um, we always have to engage the patient in order to come up with a treatment recommendation that's right for them. And it's different. The same circumstances, the same clinical situation, three patients sitting side by side, the decisions might be somewhat different between those patients when you take all those variables into account. Joyce, anything to add? You know, no, it's a really nice, um, very nice conversation. I, I do think I totally agree with Bill. Um, you know, there's a lot of back and forth dialogue along the way, um, considerations of access to medications is very important. The, um, the co-pays that accompany a lot of our oral medications are prohibitive often. Uh, sometimes the pharmaceutical companies have access programs if the um, agent is fairly new and is you know, being actively uh, promoted, et cetera. But some of our generic drugs, one that's uh, challenging frequently is capecitabine. It's an excellent drug, but the co-pays can be prohibitive. And so we sometimes are limited in our ability to use it because we have to go to philanthropic foundational uh, programs to, and we have people in our, um, in our practices, you know, who are basically, we have to, you know, cover the cost of these people to um, access medications for patients. And sometimes the philanthropic organizations have copay assistance for the patients and sometimes their coffers run dry and we have to wait to the next time they get a bolus of, of money in there. So there, there are very practical considerations about what we can access for patients. Um, and just so you know, if you, the, the whole value uh, is an ongoing dialogue with you know, our patients over time. Women will say, um, uh, or men, I take care of a few men with breast cancer too. They'll say, uh, hey, isn't it time for a PET scan? And I'll say, well, we don't really need a PET scan. It'd be okay. You know, your tumor markers are fantastic. We know that they're informative. You're doing fine. I don't think we need that PET scan. And, and we dialogue about that, dialogue about that. And so there's a lot of, you know, a lot of issues around value and, and access to care these days. 